of each day. That's the unexpected, the inconceivable grace of Jesus Christ. He willingly endured three days of darkness in a cold grave, thereby rescuing me from my night. Then he rose on the third morning in the brilliance of life everlasting and delivered me to a new day. That's the power of the cross. That's the miracle of the empty tomb. That's the love of Jesus Christ. The road to the cross was long. The road from the tomb would be longer. I shared the journey for such a short time, yet it changed my eternity. I remember the day Jesus entered the city gates for the last time. It was so many years ago, but it may as well have been yesterday morning. Cloaks, palm branches, hosannas, all strewn in the dusty Jerusalem road. The crowds made way for a powerful king, but we weren't expecting the gentle servant that arrived. Especially when promises seem broken. I confess, 
I was one of the many who expected a warrior brandishing a sword ready to crush Rome's tyranny. This was the Messiah who had been waiting for. But this was not the Messiah who arrived on the back of a colt that noisy afternoon. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have known him except for the fact that he knew me. I had met him several years earlier in a small Samaritan town called Sychar, about noon by a well. I was busy at work that day. My eyes were downcast. I thought I was alone. Then suddenly I heard a voice. A man was sitting at the well. Uh, I was stunned. He was Jewish. and They did not associate with Samaritan. I said, how can... Can you ask me for a drink? If you knew who asks you, he would have given you living water. Living water, I said. Living water? Where can you get this living water? Living water. What could this man possibly mean? All who drinks this living water will never go thirst again. Never thirst again, I cried. Sir, give me this water. So that I may cease coming to this well. I was not prepared for what would follow. Go. Call your husband and come back. I couldn't speak. So many secrets. So much shame. I had lied for years about my past. But this time, I can only utter the truth. Sir, I have no husband. I have no husband. I was not married to the man I was presently with, but the stranger knew all about that. And as he did my previous five husbands, yet there was no condemnation in his voice, only grace. Surely he was a prophet. Sir, I said, I can see. I can see you are a prophet. I know he, the Messiah is coming and he will explain everything to me. Then time seemed to stop. He looked directly at me and said, If you knew who asked you this, you know I'm here. Could he be? He must be. The one we've been waiting for? The one I've been waiting for. The Christ? Our anointed one. The, the Messiah. Messiah. I must go tell everyone. I ran back to the village, up every street, to every doorway. Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Many believed. Others did not. My reputation was one not to be trusted preceded me, and so whispers and gossip returned. I eventually traveled to Jerusalem to escape the lies and to find the one who knew the truth about me. But Jerusalem proved to be no different than my tiny village. Religious authorities spewed hatred and condemnation. Hosannas became denials, then silence. Even those closest to Jesus turned away at the end. As he knelt in a dark garden, he was alone with his father.
the most brutal of beatings, cruel thorns, a blood-stained robe, and a cross. became the scene of Jesus' death. I joined the growing crowd there. Soldiers mocked him, women wept, but I was filled with rage. An innocent man was being executed. Then I remembered the words of the Hebrew scriptures. He was despised and rejected by man. A man familiar with our suffering, he carried our sorrows. I too had been rejected by men. I too knew suffering. But why did this man choose to carry my sorrows all the way to death on a cross? In the ninth hour, Jesus breathed his last. I heard him beg his father to forgive us, but I was still not sure my sins could be forgiven. But yet, I could not forget the ancient words. He was despised and rejected by man. A man familiar with our suffering, he carried my sorrows. Oh Lord Jesus, can you truly take my pain? Can you carry my sorrows? Lost, everything is lost, and everything I've loved before is gone. Alone, like the coming of the frost, in the cold winter's chill in my stony heart Where were you with all of my suffering? Where were you with all that I've dreamed? Came crashing down in shambles around me Thank you. 
when you were there in all of my suffering. You were there in all and in fear. I'm waiting for the dawn to reappear. It seems as though I've spent my life waiting for the dawn to reappear. So many sunless days, so many empty nights, and there had never been a darker hour than when his lifeless body was laid in a borrowed tomb outside Jerusalem. Jesus Christ was dead, and all my hopes had died with him. Saturday was gray and silent. Jesus' followers had disappeared. They were either paralyzed by grief or hiding in fear. Once again, I felt abandoned. I slowly packed my meager belongings and prepared for the long journey home. I would leave at daybreak, although I knew I would be traveling without direction or light. But on that third morning, the dawn did finally appear. In the early shadows, I met several women on the road that come from the tomb. The stone is rolled away, they cried. Jesus has risen. On that indescribable morning, 
my life changed forever. I was no longer lost. I found a home. I was no longer hiding in shame. I was forgiven. I was no longer abandoned. I was a child of God. Once in darkness, now in light. Once blind, now I see. Once a sinner, now a saint. Once bound, now free. That's the power of the cross. See the chains fall. That's the power of the cross. See the chains fall. Once a stranger now a child empty now filled once condemned now reconciled broken now healed that's the power of the cross That's the power of the cross. See the chains fall. Once a prodigal. That's the power of the cross. The darkest sin is washed white as snow, and I am forgiven. That's the miracle of the empty tomb. The grave has been grave has been defeated, and I am redeemed. That's the love of Jesus Christ. He died for me. He rose for me. He's returning for me, and we will live with him forever. You have called me, Jesus, to the shore where all my sins are cleansed. I will take 
your living water, Lord, and never thirst again. I will never thirst again. I'll never thirst again. I will take your living water, Lord, and never thirst again. I 
And I'm going to already see the whole heaven jumping with joy, rejoicing, even God smiling because we have magnified his name by commemorating the most important events in man's history. In fact, these are divine events. The crucifixion of Jesus, his burial, and then his powerful resurrection. And our lives have been transformed by these events. We have Jesus, who is our Savior, and he continues to be our saving Lord. And he's going to come in order to take us home. So at this point, I would like to congratulate and express our appreciation to our dedicated choir. Amen? Amen. How about a big hand for them as we have praise on our lips for God. Thank you for the competent and dynamic leadership of Mercy Lynn. Thank you very much again. And the one who played the role of Jesus, where is he? He said it had been a long while since he last uh, performed as Jesus. Milton, yeah. Where are you? Hello. Thank you very much. Of course, we do not forget the bonus participants, the crowd, yeah, who paved the way for the coming of Jesus. And also, of course, the emotional and the, uh, what? Lovely narrator, Teresa Lanoza. <laughs> and you guys there, all of you who made this presentation really successful and organized the uh, audiovisual uh, team, the worship coordinators, all those who work in the background. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. <laughs> For you people, you are real important gifts to the church. And thank you for your prayers and support. Now let us bow our heads as we pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for visiting us with your salvation. You sent your only begotten Son, Jesus, in order to shed his blood for us that we may be forgiven of our sins, that we may have hope in our hearts, that our lives may be transformed. And we know that we live because of you. And now we want you to teach us to live for you so that as we go out to the world in the next few days, while we live, may our lives be reminders of the power of your salvation, your amazing grace, your loving presence, and your hope to bring us home. So brothers and sisters, my dear church family, people of God, may the abundant love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus, and the eternal communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. <laughs>